the big ultimate fight is in the turbine room of the dam. I suppose, in a way, you often expect the ending to be some big dramatic thing, which, you know, to be honest, it works, doesn't it? That is one hell of a climax for the T-800, the Rev-9, Grace, Sarah Connor, Danny, just to kind of end this film and maybe begin something new. It should be easy enough. When you do the stunts and you do all this action stuff, you never really know what it's going to end up looking like. It's so crazy, the amount of people, the amount of work, the amount of time. You can never imagine something this big. I've never done anything even close to this huge. T2 might have been this in its day, but all these years later, it's like, holy crap, it's huge. This dam is really cool, and it's a real dam at this river between Portugal and Spain, where the water goes down a slope, and then it's launched on a curve, and it shoots out about 250 yards down the river. The guys at the dam told us, you're standing next to it while it's running, it displaces so much air that it would suck you in like a jet engine. It's crazy. We are currently standing on the top of a turbine hall. We decided to go with the Francis turbine, which is what you can see here. And that seemed to work very well for all the action that we did. And it gave all this layering and all these different walkways that you can see behind me. And it also assisted us in a lot of the storytelling. It's kind of Danny's big moment where she's like, okay, I'm done running. So it's a big heroic moment for Danny inside this big fight where I think it's really different. This is our kill box. This turbine hall that you're in at the moment is actually loosely based on about five different turbine halls, one of which I was very lucky enough to visit that was actually in Spain. The whole way that it's been designed, it just worked perfectly. It was really important to make as much as possible that we could literally cram inside a stage that was real. We've built nearly two full turbines. There's a half pit a full turbine and then this is a, another half turbine. So we decided to extend it and make it so it's six turbines. So when it actually gets shown and you see it, that will be a CG extension to make it look much bigger. We're in this amazing set where we'll be replacing a good chunk of it and adding a huge fight between our Rev-9 endoskeleton, our heroes. Of course, Arnold is our T-800 and there'll be a lot of people wearing interesting hats running around because of the nature of some of our stunts. We have to take our heroes and basically replace our stuff players. So we're putting other people's heads on other people's bodies in order to pull that off, including removing someone's head during part of this fight sequence. We've been preparing for it for many months, and even more people than us have been preparing for us to be prepared for it. So we're very excited to have an amazing final fight sequence. We have stunt viz that we do in the stunt department and our second unit director. What we'll do is we'll go to the location and we'll see the layout, we'll see what is actually there, and we can mock up shots or mock up angles with different lenses and whatnot, and then we'll show the Tim, and then Tim will make tweaks to where something very polished comes out. We approach it very tactically in the fight. It's not just two dudes punching each other. Arnold, of course, is just blunt force, trauma, kind of a fighter, and then Sarah is very tactical, protecting Danny, and it's this whole defensive action. I'm not watching another child die, you understand me? Grace fights with this chain that she's spinning really fast, and she's using it in a way that I think is pretty cool, and of course Arnold joins them for that final fight. He's fucked up, but still in the fight. People really love watching him doing all this destructive stuff and being able to destroy anything. So uh, numbers are against me, four on one, well, four on two, let's say. And they all got to get what's coming to them. Gabriel splits into the Rev-9 Endo and the Rev-9 Ecto human-looking facade. And we do that with Gabriel playing one of them and his stunt double playing the other. To the audience, the Rev-9 will look like our actor Gabriel. And eventually he'll split and then his skeleton essentially leaves his body as if it was underneath him. And his liquid form separates. And then he'll be running around as this kind of uh, skeletized version of him. <laughs> I'm Micah Carnes. I'm the assistant fight coordinator, and right now I'm doing motion capture for the endoskeleton. There's a bunch of trackers on the suit, and then somewhere in post, VFX guys do their thing. And on the day, you'll see that it's an endoskeleton. It's not actually that hard, because you don't have to imagine that much. You have two lines of sight, and then they'll just call cut when they reform, and then one of them goes away, and Gabriel plays the rest. 
turbine room fight, you see a moment where the Rev-9 is hit up against the column. And then right on top of him is the T-800 swinging a blunt object. And he just barely gets out of the way and hits the column, causing destruction to the column. So if you imagine machine on machine crime, bam, explosion, dust, concrete, debris, that'll definitely show some power. The T-800 gets increasingly damaged. So we had some very complicated work in terms of taking Arnold and then augmenting him with the shredded arm and parts of his face revealed. You look terrible. At least I still have on my face. Arnold was up for it all, like he's giving us a great performance and then we're just augmenting that. Our stunt doubles do the more dangerous stunts, and they're great at it. This guy, Jason Trudeau, thank no. you for him. Freddy Bosiegas is a rock to the show. I can't say enough great things about him. So what works with that is she tried to kill me. I shoulder blocked it. She, now she has to drop and do push-ups. So you have to be on your toes at all times. Jason Domenico, who is one of the best stunt riggers in the business, is here, and he is doing some amazing rigs and keeping the actors safe. Jimmy Chu and Micah Carnes, who I've worked with for a long time, are great at designing action. We work very closely at doing these fights, and they're great at working with the actors. That's my boy Jason up there, taking a pass with our, uh, our very cool, very terminator -y entrance. Today we are doing the jump off the turbine the rail over there. It's a three-part hand pull. I'm on his full line that pulls him forward over here. We've got two more lines, one that keeps him afloat. The other one is his back line that kind of slows him down on the way in. So it's uh, kind of critical because if I pull him too short, he'll hit the rail on the way over. And then if I pull him too far, he'll miss his mark. The scene where Grace is pulling on the chain is incredibly complicated just in terms of the damage to Gabriel. In order to create the effect, we actually just replaced the lower jaw, but we kept the eyes and nose and all the places where he was giving us this like really amazing performance. You need something that can kill a fucking Terminator. So in my mind, the only force powerful enough was some sort of electromagnetic field that could destroy at least the skin part of it. And then this seemingly indestructible endoskeleton would be the final leg of the battle, and that's what we have to use Grace for. I'm sorry, Grace. I'm sorry. This thing is basically unkillable. It takes the combined efforts of all the characters in the film to take this thing down. I'm gonna kill you, fucker. It's just nonstop. It's like, hit the floor and smash your face, then get up and then grab her and pull her up all day. I think the most exciting part of it is that all the action has a background and has a deep urgency within the story. The action is always about character. It has to be rational, it has to be believable.